we will go to our next speaker where you at there you are do you want to share your screen yep. real fast and... uh hey guys talking about multi-agent systems uh not just single agents but now kind of stringing multiple together and how this solves some of the real world problems that i and i'm sure many other people face whenever building these kind of llm based systems in the wild uh, a little bit about me. Uh, I am a machine learning engineer, sort of termed prompt engineer at Abnormal Security, where I work on a lot of um, LLM and agentic systems um, for cybersecurity purposes. Uh, in my free time, when I'm not building models or agents at work, I'm building stuff uh, on the side uh, in open source to kind of really explore what are some of the limitations of LLMs and some of the cool ways to use them. So one core question that I've been thinking a lot about um, as I use AI products in the wild and as I build with LLMs is if you know LLMs are so smart, when well, we see all these benchmarks coming out of these top tier models, um, why are a lot of AI products that I interact with not actually that useful or have very limited capability? Um, some of my ideas for why this is the case is, you know, while 90% accuracy might work for a chat GPT like product where people already know the limitations of the technology, it might not cut it for enterprise products that are being used by people who have higher expectations. Um, you also have this issue where the efficacy of an agent might degrade as you introduce enterprise specific complexity. So the basic prompt might work, um, but as you add more and more constraints about how your business specifically operates, especially if that business wasn't in the training data, it starts to work less and less. Another issue you have is enterprise data is often very messy. Um, maybe it's not a single PDF document that describes your business, but a variety of different data sources with different nuances and different data formats. Um, and the last thing is like the larger and more capable the agent, often as just as an engineer building these kinds of systems, it's much harder to evaluate, make low risk changes, and also paralyze improvements if you have multiple people working on the same project. So kind of a motivating example that I'm sure many people who are building agents or these LM GPTs might be familiar with. So on the left, I have what I consider, you know, the simple agent, a weather assistant, you know, here's the get weather tool and you have a location and it can handle pretty simple things where it's like, you know, hey, compare the weather between SF and Seattle and use that tool. But when we move to the right, and even this is actually a simple example, um, but you can imagine, you know, dozens more or even hundreds more tools and instructions. We say, hey, you are a forecasting assistant for Cloud Incorporated. Here's all these different tools for getting the weather now and forecasting and warnings. And, you know, maybe you have all these interesting edge cases where, you know, you don't want to accidentally have your GPT or your, your agent or LLM suggest alternative weather products. You want a specific format. Um, you might not have data for all locations. You want to make sure that it doesn't like suggest random data that you're not pulling. And so over time, as you connect your agent with more and more data sources to build like an agent for your company or for your application, you run into this issue where you have tons of tools and instructions but they just end up being too much. And the LLM is unable to kind of really understand the more instructions you add, the more instructions it sort of forgets. So one solution I have, uh, and this is kind of similar to a lot of engineering problems, is to kind of modularize it and build multi-agent systems. Um, and in this case, you know, basically splitting the problem into smaller pieces. So talk a little bit about some of the advantage of this, some high level design patterns, and then the remaining open questions. So at a high level, you're breaking this into sub-agents. So what became one prompt is maybe multiple calls to an LLM um, with different contexts. The idea here is that you know the, each individual sub-agent can own and abstract away the complexity of their subdomain. And I like to compare this a lot to actual human organization design where you know a SaaS company might be made up of lots of different people and with different specializations. Uh, in this case, you know, a software engineer might own the complexity and nuance of a code base, whereas an account executive might own the complexity or knowledge about a specific account. Um, you also have this idea where they communicate, communicate with each other, not through like RPC calls, but this semi-structured natural language, which is akin to you know, how we actually communicate with maybe tickets or structured meetings or channels. Then you have this idea where by breaking it up into smaller pieces, you can evaluate and improve parts individually without risking as much of a degradation to the system as a whole. So rather than having a single prompt that you're maintaining, maybe you have multiple smaller prompts that you can individually fix issues with rather than messing with the full one. Um, going back to some of those pain points, the this kind of allows you to manage complexity by keeping the per sub-agent sub complexity low. Uh, and so rather than one big prompt, uh, you sort of have multiple small prompts um, that are kind of a more bite-sized uh, amount of instruction for an LLM. And then you have reliability, which is improved through the ability to now uh, make changes and evaluate kind of locally and isolate faults to specific parts of the whole system. So I'll kind of break this into three agent design patterns. Uh, I almost like to think of this as kind of 
you know, you have a lot of engineering system design patterns, potentially more and more we'll see this field evolve into actual agentic design patterns or how do you actually get LLMs to systematically um, perform these more complex tasks. Uh, first, I'll kind of say that there's sort of two different kinds of subagents when you're breaking a problem down. Um, there's what I call the front end subagents, which is maybe kind of similar to the idea of front end code and back end code. Uh, the front end subagents are the ones that interact with users outside the organization. They handle things like understanding what the person is actually trying to ask, uh, handling the actual right tones and structured outputs, uh, and they sort of own the complexity involved with customer interaction and customer interaction like outputs. Then you have the idea of back end subagents who interact only internally and they own various sub problems. So maybe you have specific data sources that have nuances um, or instructions related to internal workflows. Um, those are handled by your backend and subagents. And so we'll talk a little bit about some of these design patterns and you'll kind of see the, the blue and green in, in some of them. Um, but the first one is this idea of a assembly line. So this is the first kind of way that, you know, you have a single agent, it's not working. How do I break it into like these smaller pieces? Um, and so this one you might see in other frameworks called like vertical or sequential. And it's this idea of where you take an input, you maybe do some planning at the very first layer here, um, and then you kind of break down the problem into individual stages that are handled by separate chat completion calls. And so this is great for when you have an agent that has a lot of very well-defined steps that you want to break apart. And so the example is building a website where maybe the first sub agent does some amount of planning, figuring out what the user was actually asking for, clarifying things. Uh, the next sub agent maybe is responsible for building the database schema. Uh, the next one might be front end, the next one might be back end, and so on. Um, so you have like a very stage-based approach. And if you want to add features, you just add additional stages to this workflow. The cons here is when you break something up like this, it doesn't really handle out of sequence or unexpected results very well. If people don't ask, hey, build me a website, but instead, hey, maybe fix an existing website, those kinds of questions will really utterly fail if you try to kind of structure it like this. Um, but it works for you know the very staged applications. You also have the call center agent, which is kind of the transpose of that. Uh, where you have agents that are specific to different domains. And this is what I think I see a lot um, when it comes to a lot of like current agent frameworks or um, even things like OpenAI Swarm. It's this idea where you have kind of different, almost GPTs for different use cases, and you're routing the question to a specific one that handles that request. So this is great when the user's request is obviously matched to a single subdomain. Uh, maybe this you have an agent for every product that you have that answers questions on that. Uh, and if you have a new product, you just simply add another agent and route to it. Uh, the downside of something like this is it's very hard to do cross-domain queries. And so you can imagine in a case where maybe we have a trip advisor assistant kind of thing. Uh, and, you know, we have hotel questions, flights questions, and those are like different domains. If you wanted to say, hey, you know, book me a flight that's similar to this hotel or like located near it, um, you now have to cross-reference different agents and it kind of fails within this pattern. Uh, but it's a great way when you kind of have like these clear zones, div domains, or um, divisions of knowledge, kind of putting them into this pattern and splitting it up. Then you have the manager worker architecture here. And so this one, you take the input, you give it to a single kind of orchestrator um, manager subagent at the top that kind of handles pulling information from different data sources. And this is actually kind of very akin to a lot of other agents that we see where, you know, maybe we have an agent and it has all these different tools. However, the difference here is these tools themselves are other agents that it's asking for information from. Um, so you can imagine in that hotel trip advisor kind of, um, type application, you have all the complexity related to hotel bookings and what hotels available, what hotel APIs you have access to are all within that kind of hotel subagent. Um, and it's not something that the, the main manager or orchestrator subagent needs to worry about um, to kind of help reduce the complexity of any individual LLM call or set of instructions. Um, and so what's nice about this architecture, it's very flex flexible, modular, and can handle complex queries because we can kind of just pull and join information from all these different data sources. Uh, but the main issue is eventually your manager does become a bottleneck. Um, you can imagine even routing to so many different subagents eventually becomes complex. Uh, and typically you might need to even break this subagent into multiple subagents that can kind of help with that complexity. Um, so going back to that weather agent example, um, you know, really it depends on what you're trying to do and what you expect the customers to be asking for like how you should actually break it down. But let's say like this prompt was not working for you and you had a different couple different use cases. Maybe you're building you know, detail, detailed weather forecasts that pull from all the different pieces of data. Maybe it makes sense to put this into an assembly line pattern where you have different agents that own specific parts. Uh, maybe the weather now is in one agent, the weather forecast is another agent, and they kind of iteratively add to this building report. 
Um, another option is potentially, you know, if you have a lot of different, you know, weather incorporated products for live weather forecasts and alerting, you put this into the call center agent and you just sort of route the user's request only to an agent that has a subset of the full set of tools and answers questions there. Or maybe you have, you kind of want a more complex ask anything, join um, agent that you want to work on. And so this one, you would put this within a manager worker uh, kind of architecture where the manager itself might not really even know about the different um, nuances of data or even the specific weather tools. Instead, it sort of asks individual sub-agents who kind of really understand those different domains. So some open questions, I think, with breaking things down into these modular architectures are, you know, what do the costs look like? On one hand, the costs are reducing because you no longer have to spend all those tokens sending a massive prompt with all your instructions every time. It's sort of more optimized for, you know, certain questions that require certain knowledge. Well, you'll spend tokens on those. Um, but then at the same time, uh, there's a lot of cost um, associated with so many different LLM calls um, that you're doing rather than just a single LLM call. Uh, there's also the question of like, what do Gen AI engineering teams look like? How do you split this problem among multiple engineers who might be working on an AI product? Uh, on one hand, maybe you might want to, you know, break and assign each parts of the sub agent with different engineering teams or different engineering um, engineers. Uh, but then there's also this question of, you know, how much of this do you actually need to orchestrate by hand versus, you know, the future agents who are also fairly good at coding? Can they also do some of this splitting and breaking up into multi-agent structures? Um, there's, of course, the question of like, what are the actual tools and frameworks to build these? Um, I think I've seen a lot of applications are sort of using LangGraph or Crew AI or some of those other ones. I don't think any of them right now are sort of, I would, I would say, like super mature. And I think we're, we're still figuring out exactly what are the right ways to build these and, you know, how do we interact with these models going forward? Um, but I think those are great frameworks to kind of start um, building and thinking about these different architectures. Um, and then there's how does this evolve with bigger and more capable models? So. You know, a lot of the motivation for building this building on this design was because the models themselves could only really understand and use so many instructions at a time. We look at like reasoning models and more advanced, larger ones. Um, potentially, the need is less to do these. Um, my argument would still be that breaking it into different little pieces is still important, just regardless of the model's efficacy. But the ability as engineers to kind of understand and evaluate the system in a modular way is still very useful. Um, so I think while the bigger models you have, the, the better the models get, probably the point at which you need to switch to a multi-agent architecture goes farther and farther away. Um, but there's still a need for very complex applications to be able to break it down. And yeah, um, that's it. Hope this was useful. Bro, that was awesome. All right, cool. I am uh, always going to have questions, but I also want to make sure that everybody that is here knows Feel free to blast the questions off at any moment in time. You can raise your hand or you can just go off mute. Uh, I wanted to ask about, so I have two questions just to start us off. On the front end versus back end, which I find fascinating, how have you seen it done on the front end to make sure, like sometimes when you have certain agents, you need x amount of information before you can go off and get whatever task needs to be done how have you been doing it so that you get that information with that front end agent yeah so i think ultimately it comes down to like what would your prompt have looked like before as a single sub agent and like what were the instructions in that prompt to handle like that kind of gathering requirements sort of phase uh, in this case, I would say, like, in this case, the front end sub agent is solely an agent that has those instructions for, hey, we need these pieces of information to, like, get started. Or, you know, before we actually jump into the question, you know, ask these clarifying questions to the user. Um, using the front end agent is, like, that is where you put all of those instructions around, like, human interaction or user interaction. Um, nice. Yeah. Yeah, that, that makes sense. And then when you are talking about all of these different design patterns you're designing each one of the like let's take the assembly line for example each one of these squares you are specifically creating each one of these agents you're not having the agent spawn off new agents right yeah so there's, there's definitely different variants uh the most basic example is you are hard coding basically these different agent structures and so like in the website example you're saying, you know, I want the back end to be handled by one agent. Like that's, that's one bundle of complexity. And then 
the front end or the front end of the website's handled by another sub agent. Um, there's definitely versions where you know the agent itself spins up different sub agents to kind of ha help handle that. Um, definitely like pros and cons to both, and I think that comes back to you know the level of uh, autonomy you want to give the agent. I think it's definitely a trade off with like the efficacy, the understandability. You know, I can imagine if you're trying to debug why did a customer request result in such a weird query, it's it's harder to look at you know the agent spawning its own sub agents to kind of debug that versus saying like oh. The backend sub agent is the one that failed. We just need to continue iterating on that specific piece of the system. Yeah, yeah, and it gives you that modularity uh, and debugging. I like, I like that you call that out. That, I mean, I got more questions, but I know other people have questions too. So I want to shut up and make sure that I don't just talk the whole time, <laughs> just in case. We could put on some elevator music too while we wait and or the <laughs> jeopardy music um meanwhile all right somebody just jump in and cut me off because i'm gonna keep asking these questions for the uh the different design patterns that you had i think one thing that was super clear to me is i've seen all of those different design patterns smushed into one design like a hybrid have you experimented much with those and the complexity versus like actual reliability i imagine is a huge trade-off there too yeah yeah i mean definitely i think the, the high level idea for me is you know you start with a simple agent and then you see how it's failing and then you kind of handle some of those failures by breaking it into di these different modules so definitely in some of the cases where i built some of the more complex agents um there's cases where you know i go with the manager manager sub agent worker kind of paradigm and then I, I see that the the routing itself is now being kind of complex and there's a lot of business logic there uh and then we break the manager itself into maybe an assembly line agent where you know maybe it does a planning stage it kind of looks at the different data sources to kind of like understand you know how should i be routing this kind of data how should i be um structuring it so it's almost like breaking the manager worker architecture into like an assembly line manager and then you know keeping the workers and so it's sort of like as things fail breaking it into the right pieces and so then it becomes a much more complex graph as you sort of iterate on things 